Good morning, my name is John Spencer. I'm the Planning Operations Trainee on Northwest Incident Management Team 13. And I'm gonna give you an operational briefing uh, for what our resources are currently doing today. But I'm also gonna go back in timeline and give you a brief synopsis of what has occurred over the past uh, 10 days since our team has been on this fire. When we took over this fire uh, 10 days ago, our footprint for this fire was very small. Uh, we were asked to come in and take over this fire when it was about 50 acres, which is pretty unprecedented for a team to be asked, a Type 2 team, to come in and out, take it over when it is so small. A uh, NEMO team was here and they were managing it for the local district, uh, doing long-term uh, planning, strategic planning, and their time frame ran out. The local uh, agency asked us to come in and uh, set up a management team on this fire because of a suspected weather event that they knew was coming and it was going to change and alter the behavior of this fire pretty rapidly and quickly. As we came in, we had a few days to get established and gather intel and we started putting our plan together. The current plan that uh, was given to us was that no engagement can happen on the perimeter. Smoke jumpers, repellers, and hotshot crews turned down going direct on this perimeter because they had tried and it was too uh, unsafe for our resources to be in there, number one, and the terrain was too difficult to travel in. So we uh, disengaged from that direct in, uh, management uh, objective and went to a little big, bigger uh, footprint and started putting our plan together and in place. All at the same time, getting updated weather information from our weather people about time frames and what could happen, and so we were very mindful of that as we planned. As we got our plan uh, engaged and started prepping our, our indirect control lines, we got that weather event that came in. While we were doing all that planning, our fire grew to around 150 to 200 acres over those few days. Wasn't moving too rapidly, but just chunking along. As soon as the weather event occurred on uh, Monday to uh, September 7th, it came in around 1,500. Our fire at that time had grown to about 450 acres. From that moment, that wind event came in and hit. We had rapid expansion of our perimeter such that we had to re disengage our resources off their perimeter work or indirect work and get them off the fire. What occurred over the next two days was unprecedented. In this terrain, in this fuel type, to have a fire in two days go from 500 acres to 132,000 acres in that type of terrain I can't even speak to the shock that I had and I've been doing this for 40 years. So as a result, fire movement into this area increased, but not just by that footprint. The winds at our ICP in the town of Gates, our incident command post, the uh, residential power grid was getting whipped and we had a tree go down and drop a power line right onto our ICP chain link perimeter fence around our whole area and set everything on fire in 360 degrees around that incident command post. We had to engage that fire and all of our folks from our team, and I'm talking planning section, logistics section, finance section, people who don't normally fight fire, we're fighting fire that night. And we took us about an hour to get that fire under control, but in the meantime, Numerous fires started all over the community of Gates and, and extending out along the Highway 22 corridor. Wind speeds of up to 50 mile an hour gusts were blowing that fi those fires into raging fires and they were connecting. We at that time pulled the trigger and had to get our resources out and we evacuated the town of Gates with our whole command post and went to the town of Staten to the, to the west. As we went to Staten, the fire grew so rapidly, we were forced to move from Staten after we spent a night there to move farther west again. So uh, a lot of our team members uh, had personal loss on this fire. Lots of things in that command post got burned up, personal items, etc. Our team chose after a few days to stay engaged. They voted because we were asked if we were going to be mentally uh, uh, able to continue our operations and the resiliency of our team was amazing and they continued that operation. So we re-engaged uh, on the next day, Wednesday, and uh, fire was still moving on the perimeter to the west. We're now at about 150,000 acres. 
And our focus was getting people out of these communities and uh, re-engaging with our local agencies, law enforcement, search and rescue, et cetera, and our, our municipalities, the state fire marshal's office, everybody started getting engaged and cooperating together. And another thing I would like to add is the local community themselves has put forth a tremendous amount of effort. When I say local, I'm talking people in the residential areas that have offered up heavy equipment, their resources, et cetera, and it has been such a cooperative uh, experience like I've never seen between all of these resources and people to now engage the fire out here on the perimeter. So, excellent weather conditions came in. Temperatures moderated, cooled, and the humidities came up. As a result of that, we were able to start going direct on the western perimeter of this fire and down here on the south except for this area which is more remote and we are I'll tell you more about that uh, so right now currently operations for today we are engaged in putting control lines and containment lines around the western perimeter and part of the northern perimeter we are putting uh, lines here on the southern perimeter in division Zulu uh, and we are assessing and working with our state and private corporations on how we can work together on uh, putting a perimeter out here. But this perimeter is probably going to be indirect because this is the most active part of our fire right now. Uh, it cleared out as far as air yesterday and uh, wind came in and our flame lengths along this perimeter came up. So it got very active. It's also uh, in areas that we call activity units where there's been some logging operations in the past. And so the fuels are a little uh, bit more receptive and uh, fuel loading is higher. So flame lengths and fire activity is greater. So we're currently putting a plan right now and we are engaging resources in that area. I'll finish up by saying we're doing a lot of structure work in the towns of Gates and uh, out here in Mill City, uh, out to Mihama. And we are working around those structures, trying to get the control lines taken care of and also do structure protection at the same time. Our law enforcement has been dealing with the North Fork Corridor on, uh, on this fire, and that is the communities of Elkhorn Valley. Uh, we had lost a lot of structures throughout this area, so we're cutting out the road systems constantly uh, because of danger trees, and we're accessing into this area to continue to assess the damage. The uh, perimeter work that we have accomplished on this uh, edge of our fire all along uh, yesterday made great gains. I'd say we got about 30% of our containment lines in yesterday and uh, we're hopeful to maybe have 50% of our containment lines on this western perimeter done today. It's going to take probably three, four, five more days to get it all tied in and completed. Uh, but again, like I said, fire behavior is really, really moderated. Why? Two reasons. We're coming out into the ag lands in the lower valleys. Uh, we're coming out of the mountainous areas and the forested areas and we're able to pick it up in these uh, ag pockets out here in, in the west. Uh, overall, we have the fire to the north that's concerning us, of course. Uh, it's moderated. We're still trying to deal with how we're going to close this gap, whether we uh, connect from fire to fire. We're working with the, the team on this fire in contact with them on what we're going to do to close this gap. Uh, because we get back into the wilderness out here and we can't go back in and engage on that perimeter uh, with our resource because of its inaccessibility overall. So that is our overall plan. 